Okay, for this problem, what I notice is different about the previous examples is this one is not uh, set equal to zero. So if it's not set equal to zero, that's going to be your first step. You want to make sure that you bring everything over set equal to zero because that way you can factor and set them equal to zero and get the answer. So the first thing I want to do here is move the two sine x over uh, to the other side. Now it doesn't really matter which side I work with here, but uh, in this case I'm just going to bring the two sine over to the left hand side. So I get sine x cosine squared x minus two sine x that's going to equal zero. So now I've done the first step. The second step is going to involve a factoring. So I notice I have two terms again and this is going to be one of those where I'm only going to factor out the common factor. I'm not going to have two sets of parentheses here because I just look at what I can pull out. In this case the sine repeats twice, that's our common factor. So you're going to pull out the sine x and then you get cosine squared x minus 2 uh, left over. So now I have this. Now each of these I want to set both those individually equal to 0. So first I do sine x equals 0 and I do cosine squared x minus 2 equals 0. Now this one we can solve that right away. Sine x equals 0 we look at our table here and we notice that uh, we get a 0 there. Now that's going to be this spot on the inner circle right there. That coordinate would be 1 comma 0, that's where the y coordinate is equal to 0. We have another spot on the unit circle where it's equal to 0 and that's going to be over here. So we have these two. Now this time our answers can be written in radians. So I would have x is equal to, okay now both these angles here, I would have 0 and, and uh, 180. I'm not going to include the 360 though even though it does take us back to 360 that's not included on an interval. So we only have two answers for the first equation. I have again 0 and 180 degrees. So those are two answers for the first one. Now let's take care of this one. Now when I solve this one I would add 2 to both sides. I would get cosine squared x equals 2 and I would take the square root of both sides and I would get plus or minus the square root of 2. Okay now square root of 2 that's not a value that I see uh, on my table. So in this case what I need to do is I need to be careful about the val actual value I get here. Remember going back to the, the section we talked about with inverse trig functions. If you see a number after the equal sign that's uh, not between negative 1 and 1, you're not going to be able to get an answer for this one because this is 1.41 if you put that in the calculator and so if we don't have a value that comes off of our table then we have to take the inverse of both sides. So if I try and take the inverse of both sides, I would get inverse cosine of, let's just do the first one, inverse cosine of square root of 2. If I try and put that in my calculator, I'm going to get an error. So that means, again, the re you can't do that because that number has to be between negative 1 and 1 because originally it comes off, this value, all these values should come off of the unit circle. And as we see here, the biggest it could possibly be is going to be 1. Uh, so there's no way I can get an x value that's 1.41 that's not on my circle. So because of that, that means that this whole thing, I can just cross out, that's not going to give me any answer. So therefore, the only solutions I'm going to have for this particular problem are going to be only 0 and 180.